Hi, everybody. It's Christy Glass coming to you from the land of Zoom, and we are finishing our Manch series strong with a repeat offender. Can I call you an offender? A repeat, a repeat customer. It's Lewis Brooklyn Boynitz. Hiya. Hi, Christy. How are you? It's been, it's been forever. My gosh. I feel I like I haven't seen you in over a year. I think we saw each other last probably at Vogue. Vogue, yeah, it was Vogue. It was Vogue. Whoa. And probably for two seconds. I know. <laughs> no. It was such a whirlwind. That that whole weekend was just like, oh, it was just, it was, it was exciting. It was exhausting. It was just, it was awesome. Um, you know yeah. what though? We saw each other after that because you were on Manch and we talked about Kaleidoscope. That's right. Yes. Yes. You're right. Absolutely. Uh -huh. right. And I love your hat. People are going to want to know about your hat. So I, I've been trying to reinvent myself a little bit. Like I, I think the pandemic and COVID kind of like it made me shift a little bit. I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta change the look a little bit. And you know, I, I, this past year has been the year of change as I, as I like to call it, but good change uh, in spite of um, the show we've had. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. The show. Right. The show. We're going to call it the show, right? The 2020 show. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I just, I needed to like, kind of like figure out, all right, wh where's Lewis going in these days? And I don't know. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. You know? I like it. I like it. It's really, and I got some glasses, you know, yeah. we're all trying something new. Can we like, just talk about a second about your, like your fashion journey right now? I just love your videos. I've been watching them. I'm like, this girl is like, taking it to the next level so kudos to you well thank you you know the irony of that being i'm not wearing these clothes anywhere <laughs> <laughs> what is fashion for well, wait, wait first of all where are we going where there's nowhere to go right now so where are we going right right but you know what it just proves that fashion is for you and no one else that's right so right. there you go there you go and these are not prescription by the way they're purely I love those fun. I love those <laughs> it reminds me of a character from the uh oh god the family the superhero family oh my god the incredibles yeah yes a little short uh, yes her name is edna mode there you go I, yeah I just, i'll take that, I'll <laughs> take that as a compliment so uh, tell me what has been going on in the past year since uh, we chatted well it's been a crazy year um i back in march i got sick with covid so i was out for an entire month um horrible experience um i i was very uh, transparent about my experience with it. And I even did a couple lives uh, talking about it and, you know, working in the healthcare uh, and working at Mount Sinai Hospital for 12 years, um, you know, I, I, I wear two hats. And so, and I love my job. I love what I do at, at the hospital. Um, but I, you know, we talk about, you know, COVID and for those that haven't gone through it or have, haven't experienced, you know, the ailment of it, it's just like, it was just it threw me off my chair and it, it it just at the end of it at the end of the day it just made me appreciate life a little bit more mm. um, and then I it's kind of like I woke up after having COVID I woke I felt like I woke up and it was like okay let's get to work Lewis right and I just hit the ground running I have been designing my butt off <laughs> for months and I mean I, I literally produced I want to say like eight patterns uh, in a matter of like two months maybe right and that was like at the peak of my designing moment and i've never done that before i've you know i've designed for companies i've designed for myself um but i i really dived into the world of design and, and i felt like i just had the second win and it was great and I, I just my mind was exploding with ideas and color and yarn and it's just like it doesn't get any better than that um so it's been a year of reinventing, pivoting, right? Because, you know, we, we were bound at home, we were homebound, right? So um, what did that look like? And so I started teaching virtual classes um, through Zoom and through Vogue Knitting Live and, um, you know, fiber retreats. Uh, so it was, it was a great experience. Um, the year was busy um, and just, you know, interviews, it's just been great. You know, I thought, okay, here's the pandemic now what's going to happen right and um i always tell people knitting crocheting the fiber arts world is essential is essential right now right and and i i talk about this all the time that that you know we are essential so knitting shops all the knitting shops were open um that didn't stop and and, and that that excited me to see 
um, businesses like Strengthening Studio, um, Nitty City here in New York, right? Still flourishing in the time of a pandemic only says one thing and that says, you know, we are essential. People need something to escape from, right? And, you know, we've all had this horrible year, um, but it grounded us, right? And we've got so many new knitters and so many new crocheters. Um, I get I get messages all the time throughout social media. My website has like, so many people have been subscribing to my website. Um, I've been getting emails from new newbies, as I call it, and just asking for tips and advice. So it's been great. It's been great. You know, it's been great um, seeing the shift happening, right? And 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 working around the pandemic, right? Uh, we can't go through the pandemic, so we're gonna work around the pandemic. That's that's the best way to put it. And and it was it's been it's been it's been a great year in the sense that um, you know. I was able to still have that connection with folks. Yeah, I think a lot of us were wondering, what does this mean? What does this mean? And watching as as everyone's kind of making their adjustments and you're not alone in, in articulating that we are essential. And right. many people were very shocked at how much work they had. I, I have noticed a little bit of a shift too. And I don't know if it's because, I love that you used the word escape because of my... My company is called Knit and Escape. And I don't know if it's because of that, because I'm like posting to two places now, but I definitely am seeing new handles and people have this new excitement about knitting and there's been all this attention in the Times and other publications. So it is really fun to welcome new people into the fold. You know, and, then, and then they get to discover people like you, right? And and just people like Gigi and, and just, just being able to, to, you know, to be able to have that, that connection and, and just for people to reach out to you and ask for advice, I think it's it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. And you know, like I said, it's for me, it's always been about community. It's always been about connecting, right? And and what better way to do that even now, more so, right? And you know, I'm working, which I'll talk about later. I'm working on a special project with Facebook. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second, but which has to do with connecting. Um, cool. yeah. I did watch your episode on Disney Plus since the last oh, time we chatted. Yeah. <laughs> We got hooked and we watched like every episode of that show after that. It's great. It's such a great show. It's such a great show. I loved it. it. You know, that, that experience was, was so much fun. And it was, it was a bit scary because it's the first time that I'm in, in an actual studio and I've got like cameras flying above me, like 10 cameras in front of me, look at this camera. So it was like, whoa, where, what? And like, you know, the funny part about this, and I, and I can share that with you now is that, um, we had to do three takes at one point because I kept looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> so mind you, wait, it's in front of a live studio audience. And I'm like, I know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, great. And like no pressure. And I'm not feeling small right now, but like it three times. Cause I was so nervous that like every time, like I would see this camera like flying across from me, I'm like, ah, oh, look at the pretty camera. <laughs> <laughs> Remind everybody the name of the show and the episode you're on. Oh, so it's called The Big Fib. Um, I'm in episode 11 and I opened the show for that episode. It was really great. The Big Fib is um, a children's game show where we have the expert and the actor um, who's pretending to be the expert and children have to ask questions to both participants and determine who's the, who's the, act, who's the expert and who's the fibber. Um, so it was great. It was a great experience. And I got to, you know, I got to, I got to go up there. I did a little demonstration as you saw. Uh, I got to talk about myself and I even gave out a little shout out to Hat Not Hate. And it was great. It was a great experience. And and so for those of you that haven't watched, it's on Disney Plus, uh, The Big Fib, episode 11. Yeah. Awesome. And I was just going to say, before we move on to talking about a few other subjects, how happy are you that you have that yarn room right now in this pandemic? This is my sanctuary. Right. I, I talk about it. I can have the worst day, and I just all I have to do is come in here, sit on my futon, which is right over here, and just do nothing. And it, I, you know, even like I, you know, I, there are times that I come home from work and I'm so stressed out. I'm just like, you know, with everything that's happening, and I just like, okay, let me let me just breathe, let me unwind, and I just sit it here, and I don't go to my living room and I don't turn on the TV. No, the first thing I do is I take off my shoes, I come in my knitting room, and I just sit. And you've been here. And and we did an interview here, actually. We did a few. Yeah. 
And so like, it's grown. My stash has grown even more since, um, you know, I always talk about, I, I love to support indie dyers any way I can. So during the pandemic, I was buying so much yarn just because I wanted to support my friends. And, and that, that to me was important. And I knew that people were struggling. And so, you know, there were times, I mean, I was just buying yarn. I didn't have to buy yarn because I have so much of it. And so I would buy yarn and I would just give it away. And like, you know, any organization that needed yarn, I'm like, hey, I have so much yarn, you know, come pick it up, <laughs> you know? And it would just, so it worked out, it worked out. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my magical place as I, I like to call it. This is I'm where just, all magic happens. <laughs> I'm just thinking that two bedroom apartment, if you ever had any doubts, no longer. That's right. Right? That's right. A little extra space during COVID. As a designer, because I know that designers can get, I mean, you mentioned this like sort of creative gush of energy, which I, I can relate to, to, you know, I did not, I was not knocked down by COVID. My husband definitely was. And so I understand sort of that sense of urgency about living afterwards, you know, being grateful that you survived it, but there's gotta be some stress with designing. So is there any time that you knit someone else's pattern? Yeah. So, you know, it's so funny and, and it's what I call comfort knitting, right? Um, so I don't know about other designers, but for myself, and I'm speaking for myself, but there are times where I just get this block, right? And this block just stops me from being creative. And a lot of that has to do with stress. A lot of that has to do with, you know, being exhausted. Um, so there's these, this mental block that was existing in, in my life um, where for a period of time, I wasn't able to, to really like dive into being creative and, and designing the way I normally was. And then I just started saying, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to knit. I'm just going to knit. I'm not going to, I'm going to pick somebody else's design and I'm just going to knit and that's it. And I forgot what that was like. Right. So for the past, I want to say two years, um, it's been nonstop, right? I've been on the go, you know, two years ago we had, you know, a year ago we had the fashion show. So like a big chunk of my year uh, on two, that, that last year was, was devoted to this fashion show and putting that fashion show together and not only putting that together, but designing my own pieces. So um, it was a different time. And I, I hadn't gotten back to comfort knitting, right? I hadn't enjoyed knitting. Now, I don't want to say I didn't enjoy designing, but that, that feeling you get when it's just carefree knitting, right? And you're like, okay, I'm going to pick a sweater design and I'm just going to knit this sweater and just follow the instructions and not have to worry and be bogged down by me creating and designing a pattern at the moment, right? So I needed that and it was so great. And, and I, you know, I can't even remember the last time I made anything for myself, right? I've always knitted pieces for others. I've designed um, and then the samples get shipped off to a company if I'm collaborating with a company or an indie dyer so they could take photos. So it's like, you know, it goes from one hand to the next, right? And it's on to the next project and on to, and that's how it's been for the past two years. So I, at one point I was just like, I can't do this right now. I can't, I can't, I, I have this mental block and I just, you know what, just knit Lewis. That's, that's it. Just, just pick a pattern and knit. So I've been working on a sweater, a beautiful sweater, and it's brought me so much joy. And I'll show you what it is. So first, this is the pattern. And I can't even pronounce this name right, but it's by Meiju KP, okay? Um, and it's called Rejavik Sauce. I'm going to put it up. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so that's the sweater. And I'm going to show you my version. So funny story. I'm you got yourself an Icelandic Lopi sweater. Yeah. Wait until you see what I, first of all, I got to tell you, before I show you the, my version of it, right? Because I'm not doing the cuffs and I'm not doing the bottom of the sweater. I'm just doing the yoke, right? But I was going through, um, I'm a huge fan of shows from Spain on Netflix. Like that's, I like scour Netflix for these Spanish shows because they're, they're filled with so much drama and they're so dramatic just because Spanish people are like that. We, we Spanish people are like that. So, so wait, um, wait, is it subtitles or it's in Spanish? Yeah, you can get it. Subtitles, you can get it, get the audio in English so that they're speaking English. But you um, listen in Spanish because you understand Spanish. Yes. Yeah, so I, I listen in Spanish, right. Um, and it just looks weird when I see like the, the English version. Them speaking like, English. It's like their mouth doesn't match with Spanish. Yeah. And then I look at the subtitles sometimes. I'm like, he didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I have say? to say, side note, when I was in Paris, so my daughter, she's studying French, and I had seen the, the latest Mission Impossible already. So I said, maybe we should go see a movie in French because we were tired. And then that's still like a French thing to do. And she it wasn't advanced enough to really understand what was happening. So it was good. I had already seen it. But I have to say the I don't know how they did it, but it you really believed they were speaking French. Yeah, yeah. After a while, it's so it's so weird because after a while, like if you're watching the audio version in English, you tend to forget. And it's like, mm -hmm. and then when you turn off that audio and you listen to the original way, the way it's supposed to sound, completely, <laughs> it's like, whoa, like that's how you really sound. Yeah. So um, I found this show and I, and I, and I have to get the name, the name of it for you, but it's an awesome show. And I, I, I finished the entire season. But the guy was wearing the most amazing um, Fair Isle sweater. And I was just like, I paused my TV. I was like, I took a picture of it. And for the next, literally, I'm not even exaggerating, for the next four hours, I was scouring Ravelry for this pattern and putting up like on my stories. Can anybody tell me what pattern this is? Cause like, and it was just a picture of the guy, of the actor wearing this sweater. And everybody was messaging me saying, oh my God, I don't know what it is, but when you find out, please let me know. Cause I want to make that sweater. So I found the closest version to it, which is, which is this, right? And uh, again, so I'm, I'm not doing like the cuffs or the bottom part of the sweater. I'm only working, like I'm, I'm dealing with the top. So I'm gonna show you, um, and I'm so excited because I'm like seeing like, you know, the sweater come together. It's like, oh my God, it's so great. Look. I know, right? Hold on, let me, let, me, let me lift this up a little bit. But it's, ah, and the colors don't do it justice right now on camera, but it's like the blue is like a much brighter blue than what I can see right now on, on, on Zoom. But um, yeah, it's, it's such comfort knitting, comfort. This is, this is comfort knitting, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and I, to me, that's, that's what I, I miss so much about my early days of knitting where it was just like, oh, I'm gonna knit somebody else's, you know, I'm gonna knit, I'm gonna pick a, a scarf. I'm gonna make a, a shawl and, or a hat and just knit it. And I haven't done that in so long. It's been like a, a couple of years. Yeah, people say once your hobby becomes a job, it's a really hard to strike the balance. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, like, I, you know, I, I often talked about, you know, you know, my biggest fear, right, when I first started down this journey was like, I don't ever want knitting to feel like work. Right. And thankfully, um, it hasn't. Like, there are times that I see my thing is I don't know how to say no. Right. right. <laughs> so, so I, and I do it to myself all the time. I, I fall victim to it. It's my fault. Nobody else's, but I take on all these projects because I feel like if I don't take that project now, there's no, there's no telling when I'm going to be able to get back onto that. Right. I get that. So it could be a missed opportunity. And so like, I'll take on. And, and so that's, here we go with, okay, now you're back. You know, you were down here. Now you're back up here again. Your tank is full. And so like, mm -hmm. So, you know, and then, so I, I, I do that to myself, but I have to learn how to, my, my goal this year is to learn how to say no. That's, yeah. that's my goal. Is, yeah, is, that's good. You know, can't, you know, take on all these, all these projects and all these tasks, but um, I will say that it's never felt like work and I've never felt like it was a nuisance or a problem or an issue for me. It was just, you know, all right, you got a lot, you got, you got deadlines coming up, Lewis. Yes. These patterns out, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I love that you shared about that Lopi sweater, especially that it was on a Spanish show. I recently saw this woman, American living in Japan. And so everything's really new to her. And she was reporting on her stories about how they do the news in Japan. I don't know what part of Japan, but they have this laundry like part of the weather forecast for some reason, <laughs> or is it laundry? It was something very random that you wouldn't think of. Anyway, she was showing the icons and isn't this interesting? And the weatherman had on a lopey sweater. Oh my God. But I just love that it's so everywhere, you know? It is, it is. And the thing is, is like, they're very distinct sweaters, right? Yes. You see it, you're like, someone knitted that. Yes. That, you, you, and you can just tell, like there's, a, there's something special about lopey sweaters and, you know, Fair Isle and, you know, that, that really stand out and, you know, I was like, I need to find a really, and the colors are so important, right? I, was like, I wanted something to pop in, but yeah. It's, I just it's loved, cool. I mean, 
Have we ever seen a weatherman in the States wearing a sweater? No, never. I mean, maybe hope, maybe one day we'll get Sam Champion to like. <laughs> to right? Like, Let's send him a sweater. Love so, the knitters. And, and I actually have a connection with Sam Champion. So maybe I'll, I'll reach out to that connection and see if we can get up. A little connection that I have him wear. You know what? Let's work on that. Let's work on that. I kind of like that idea. Yeah. If you could send me like later on, obviously, but if you could send me a clip of that, that what you saw, what you told me about, other man, I'll send that over to my friend and get it to Sam Champ. I'm like, look, he's doing it. Mm -hmm. I like this. I like this. Now, talk about the collab or what you're working on with Facebook. So I next week. So we are. Okay. We're so shooting week. this in January. You'll see this in March. Okay. So so. In January, I am filming uh, a Facebook commercial um, within Facebook, if that makes any sense. So yes. I, it's not going to be on television. It's going to be a, a commercial within the Facebook platform. So what happened this year was that um, we got uh, a lot of hobbyists uh, just springing up all over the place. We got mm -hmm. people that paint canvas and, and people that are planting and knitting and crochet and baking. So... Uh, Facebook came up with this campaign called Greatness in the Making, and um, it's taking a look at, you know, uh, support groups within Facebook uh, for those that are just venturing onto a new hobby like knitting. So I'm going to be the knitting expert, I guess, in the in this commercial. I'm, I'm so excited. Like, I've been on, on, on Zoom calls left and right with Facebook, and it's kind of scary because they're like, okay, we're going to check your... Your, your, your speed and there's like this website I had to go on to check my internet speed and okay let's check for lighting and let's do all from my home mind you I'm filming from my home so they're sending me like all the equipment lighting camera a laptop iPhone they're sending me all this stuff to film for this commercial because it's going to be with like five other people so there's going to be like a plant guy and maybe a baking guy and then I'm the knitting guy and so like we're going to all be in bubbles. And in the middle is the beginner. And so like, we're all giving him like all these or her all these like tips and tricks. And so we got lines, we have lines that we have to memorize and everything. So this is all happening next week. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. I'm like, this is great. So I love that. Yeah, it's going to be great. Fun fact, when I was doing my finished object video on the pussy hat that I made with Alex Reynosa's ombre yarn, Okay, yeah. They took a two second clip of that video and put it in an internal Facebook ad and paid me a residual. Wow. So it's really interesting that that image is somewhere being circulated within Facebook too. Like the public will never see it. Here's, and I, you bring up a, a really interesting point, right? And so they had emailed me, they sent me an email. Facebook sent me an email, and this was like a month ago, and they were like, we're doing this campaign. I'm like, how the heck did these people find me? So like, I reached out to the woman and I was like, and I emailed her back and I was like, I'm just curious, how did you guys find me? She says, you were mentioned in a chat group within Facebook and a, quite a few people brought your name up. And so my whole point to this is that you never know who's watching, right? Never know. Well, they go, they tend to going down a rabbit hole. And so she's telling me how the director and the producers started going through my pages and my feeds and they started looking through all the information and I'm, and it just made me realize for a second, I'm like, God, was there anything in there that was racy? Or I'm saying, and I always think the worst. I don't know why. Lewis. Oh my God, I hope there was nothing offensive in those posts or anything like that. But you know, that's just me in my head, right? It's like when you see the cops, you're like, what did I do? <laughs> I know. Or they come knocking on your door. You're like, I swear I didn't do it. I'm like, <laughs> but, but I just, it made me, it makes you realize like, you just never know who's watching you, yeah. right? And even years down the road, it's like, like, hey, by the way, we, you know, and then here comes an opportunity and yeah. come knock on the door. And that's why you always got to be on point. I always tell people, yeah. be on point. You never know who's watching you, right? So. I think it's true. I mean, what we're putting out there now, it's our portfolio. It's our life portfolio. And from a parenting point of view, I say to my kids, you can't erase that. It's yeah. once yeah. it's there, it's there. Oh, you can't exactly. And I say that all the time. Let it be a comment, a picture, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, statement, whatever the case is. Once it's in internet world, that's it. You can't retract that back. And that will follow you for life. You could have a thousand positive comments and that one negative comment 
and that one negative comment is all you're gonna you're gonna be on top of the whole time like that's not true that's not who i am and and i i listen i've been attacked right in the past and uh and i remember i'm like i never said that and i'm not that's not who i am and like you get offended you get you, be, you become offensive you know you want to make sure that that people know the truth and 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 sometimes you, again just step taking a step back and letting telling yourself that is not for me to deal with right now this is not a battle and i st- and i and i and i just cut it and that's and it's it's let it let it let it deal on its own and that's the way i deal with it nowadays pick up your needles do a few rows be, yeah. do a few rows before you respond because <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, you can get and and social media can be you know it can take you for a whirlwind right and you got to be careful of what you put out there so you know yeah. photos comments just you know i always tell people be careful what you put out there I think we both agree though that there is more positive than negative. And I think we're both very grateful for our individual communities and where we cross over. It's been a good year. It's been a good year. I feel like the community has embraced each other this year. Um, I've seen a shift. I've seen a big change uh, within the fiber arts um, virtually, right? Um, again, you mentioned something earlier that that makes a lot of sense where you know, we're having all these different platforms popping up now, right? And all these new accounts and, you know, influencers are, are, are emerging and it's so beautiful to see. And, and not only that, but to see them work with each other and to see the collaborations happening, the support, the way the support systems are working with each other. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life, right? And, and um, 20, although 2020 was, crazy um the i feel like and i'm only speaking from our our community our industry uh, I, i've seen this this collaborative effort to say okay i i see you i hear you i got your back um i or i need to learn more or i i you know teach me or let me see and i've been seeing a lot of that and um and it, it, and it's refreshing it is refreshing you know and and i love i love watching those magical moments happen and those relationships blossom i've seen it all over social media so it's been it's been good it's been good so talk about what you've been up to with vogue uh this is we're recording this just days before vkl but i know you and cecilia did a fun new york video oh, about, oh my gosh well so we, i saw it on her instagram okay so we oh my gosh so last sunday cecilia and i we did what we call the new york city tour and i could talk about it now because um, it's, this is not going to be shown until March. So Cece and I did a little skit. I, cre- I created this skit, a comedy skit, where we wake up Saturday morning and we think it's Vogue Knitting Live weekend. And we're getting ready and we're thinking that we're, so we're texting each other. I'll meet you at the hotel. And so we get to the hotel and there's no show. And we're like, what the heck? What are we going to do? And they're like, you know what? Let's just visit a bunch of yarn shops in New York City. And so we take everybody for a tour of all the New York City yarn shops, we go inside and we actually, not all the yarn shops we were able to interview, but we interviewed like Nitty City, like Zach from Nitty City, Felicia from Strengthening Studio, Rachel from Wool, uh, from Woolen. Uh, so we did a whole bunch of interviews and it was fun. We, uh, it was, I think you guys will really enjoy it. So I'm hoping that people do register because we, I mean, it's an hour long. The video is an hour long. I had spent, all Sunday, Sunday nights, like two, three o'clock in the morning, editing this video. And I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. This project was great, but I, I can't do any more editing. So it was a great, it was a great experience. Um, and we took people for a tour of New York City. So I think uh, the folks will get, will get a kick out of it. I know that Gabrielle Ald, who helps run a Vogue Moon shows, um, she loved it. When I sent it to her, um, the next day, she was like, oh, my God, this is so good. And she's like, it's funny, you know, and that's what we wanted. We wanted people to be entertained. And I told her, I said, I want to do something different. Being that we're not able to come together for the New York City show, we don't have a fashion show. We don't have New York, the New York City show going on. You know, we don't have vendors. We don't have any of that. So let's try to do something different. And, and so, you know, I, I'm, I'm an advocate for that, right? Like, give people something extra. And, and so hopefully... Hopefully we did them justice. So we'll she see. said to me, "Is there any way we can do the subway storm virtual?" And I'm like, "The thing is that <laughs> the subway <laughs> and that event 
could not be farther from appropriate COVID behavior. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. So yeah. I'm like, I'm going to think about this. And if I come up with something, I'll let you know. But man. So one, of the, so one of the things that I wanted to do for this video was teach somebody how to knit on the subway. And I was like, I can't even do that properly. Because Too like, close. Right. To, and you need to be close to somebody to teach them how to knit. So, it, you know, I was like, I got to scratch that idea, but I wanted to like, just pick some random person, pick out a set of needles and some yarn that's all wrapped in plastic. I'm like, here you go. Take it out of plastic. We're going to teach you. I'm going to teach you how to knit on my way to the hotel in Manhattan. So I do love Manhattan. that idea. So, you know, we, hopefully it, it worked out, but I, I loved it. And you know, what? I'll send you a, I'll send you the video. Yeah. I'd love to see it. The other thing is I was thinking, well, I guess I could go on the subway by myself as Dominator, but I'm going to lose my internet. Like I can't, I can't do, I can't do it live. So anyways, well, you know what? Let's manifest right now, January, 2022. Yes. Being together at Vogue. Yeah. I know for a fact that 2022 is going to be amazing. Like I, I, I think we, there's so much that has happened, right? We had, we lost Pearl Chin, we lost John Giswold. Um, we, we lost a few others in the industry this past year. And one of the things that um, is important that is that we highlight them. And so at some point in the show, we are gonna do um, a remembrance video or something to highlight lives that we lost um, in 2020, you know? and and just talk about that so I, that's a special project that i definitely want to work on um we got kaleidoscope 2 happening um so that's going to be coming up and we're going to get the ground hit, we're going to hit the ground running with that soon um but yeah i i know that 2022 vogue is going to be amazing and we should do something special because we're all going to be back and we're not going to know how to act because we're like oh people <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. I, I, at the beginning of the pandemic, and I'm sorry if you can hear snoring, my little partner in crime here. My partner is too cute for words. I just got to say. I, and her <laughs> snoring is so. <laughs> oh, she just stopped, of course. Anyway, um, you know, I used to fantasize at the beginning of like this moment when our doors could open and we could all come out like after a tornado or something like, is everyone okay type moment. And I do wonder what it's going to be like, because Vogue is like a Petri dish slash hug fest. Yes. So, right. I mean, what? Uh, here's here's my, the way I look at it is that I think by a year from now, right? We're looking at a year right now, vaccinations are happening. People are getting vaccinated and I'm being hopeful that this is going to work for us. And, you know, I think it's right now it's safe to say, hopefully... 2022 is going to happen right and yeah. um but i think with the experience that we all had in 2020 i think we're going to be a little bit um what's the word i'm looking for more cautious cautious right? we're going to be cautious when we walk into these events not just yeah. going live but any event that we go to i think we're going to be a little bit more cautious um just because you know we've had the year that we've had and yeah. we've all learned you know we all had to pivot we all had to rethink and 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 shift the way we, we we live our lives and i think that's gonna happen going forward right and i think it's a good thing i think it's a good thing i think people are more clean <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> i know right um but it's just you know it's it's one of those things that you know i know that people are gonna look at and be like they're still gonna like I know, but I just associate these events. I mean, even every once in a while. So I have this one memory card with my videos that has Vogue on it from the subway storm. I just haven't deleted it. And every time I'm uploading media, I'm kind of reminded and we're just so close to each other. And then, you know, but that's part of it, like hugging the knitters. Oh, and, and that's the thing we, because we're, we're mushes. We're, a bunch we're mushy. Of and that's just who we are. And we yeah. love to hug and we love to give love. Right. And you know, it's, I think, um, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to look, but I know. I, I know I miss, I miss that interaction. I miss yeah. the voices and, you know, the conversations. I think yeah. that's, that's important. And, you know, I think us being kind to one another, you know, it's always going to be, that's always going to be the case. Right. And when we come together at these shows, it's kind of like a big reunion, right? No. 
that's what I, t- I I always look at at Vogue shows or like stitches. I always look at them as reunions. Mm-hmm. Kind of like you know, you're meeting a family, or maybe you're meeting a new family member for the first time, a distant cousin. That's the way I look at them. Like yeah. just cousin, right? Um, and so like I I I love that. I love that. And it's always been that oh my like I, I by the time I walk away from that person that I just met, yes. I feel like I've known them for years. Yeah. Right? I can now call that person my friend. Yeah. That's just the magic of these shows. And that's what the shows bring us. And that's why we crave it so much. And that's why we we're going through withdrawal. And yeah, and, you know, and we're all trying to like, okay, well, they're doing a virtual. Let's do the virtual. And although it's not the same, um, I, I, I it's important that we still have some of that mm-hmm. connection. Like people I see think it. so. Yeah. I think so. Before you go, tell us what's on your mannequins behind you. People will want to know. So behind me over here, I'll bring this over here. This is my my masalo shawl. I did a knit along for this um, last year. Oh, I could talk about that for a second. So I'm doing my January knit along, which is happening in two weeks, for an an accessories line that I designed called Lanka. And so I could talk about that for a second because that's that, this is cool. So I designed Fair Isle set, which is a hat. Right, so there's a hat, there is a reversible cowl, and matching fingerless mittens. Here's the best part about the Lanka series, and um, I'm doing the knit along in January. It only takes all four, all so technically it's four pieces, right? All four pieces take four skeins of triple t- twist yarn by Madeline Tosh. So let me just grab this real quick. Wow. So did you collaborate with them? Yeah, I collaborated with Madeline Tosh. And um, I designed, actually, this is three of six designs that I designed with Madeline Tosh. Um, all, all in the same base, uh, which is triple twist. It's chunky base yarn. So these four skeins makes all of this, right? Makes all of this. So somebody was like, well, that doesn't make... So the thing is, I one of the one of the issues that I've had in the past with knitting people's designs um, early on in my journey was that I I buy this yarn for the project, and next thing you know, I'm like left with so much yarn, and I'm like, ah, I'm gonna put it in my basket, and it stays there for years. I never go back to that yarn because it's like half a skein or m- almost a full skein of yarn. So when I designed the Lanka accessories line, I was really specific. I said I want to utilize all the yarn all four skeins. And I did. I was really, really particular in how I designed it. So I think knitters will get an appreciation of how I use all f- all four skeins of, of yarn. It takes four colors. Um, the cool thing about it is that um, they're not matchy-matchy, as I call it, right? So, but they all work with each other. Cohesive. So, yes, there you go. That's the word, cohesive. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. I'm doing um, so it's going to be a month long knit along. So each week I will release a video on YouTube. Uh, what, week one will be the hat. Week two will be the fingerless mittens. And then week three will be the uh, the cow. And then on week four, I will do a party, like a Zoom party. So it's going to be really cool. Every week is followed by a live Zoom that I'm going to host a week after I release the, each video. Um, and it's, it's a way to connect with people. It's just it's something fun. It's free. You know, I always tell people, like, why should we have to pay for a knit along? The only thing you got to pay for is the yarn and the pattern. That's it. But all the instruction I'm giving, you know, free of cost, you know, you go onto my YouTube channel, you watch the video, you join me live seven days, six days later, and we talk about any questions you may have with regards to that particular piece. Love it. Yes. So it's going to be a little something. I was going to ask that. So I'm glad you filled it in because when I saw that the mitts were blue, I'm like, I think I know what he's doing here. Mm-hmm. so good so and it's cool because so the patterns um so if so the ebook is sold uh only on my website right i was having issues with ravelry and trying to upload the ebook which is all three patterns and you get a discount if you buy the ebook um but the lanka accessories line um you can buy them individually both on my website and ravelry but you can only buy the ebook on my website and okay. in the ebook there's a letter that I wrote to my to my knitters and an instruction on how to pair the yarns properly. 
So it's really important. I always tell my knitters, make sure you read everything. Like yeah. there's a letter in there for a reason. There are instructions there for a reason. And I always, one of the biggest mistakes all knitters do is that they never go through the entire pattern. They never read through the entire pattern. So it could be one word. That one word will throw your pattern completely off. I've, that has happened to me more than one time. So here's, here's Lewis's tip of the day. Read the pattern <laughs> word for word. Don't miss a beat. Very important. And I tell, I tell all my beginner knitters that all the time. It's a mistake that I make. Even myself, have, I've made that mistake. Everybody makes that mistake. Read through the pattern. And then what about the pattern on the mannequin to your left? So this was a collaboration with um, Lady Dye Yarn. Um, and this was a, a pattern that I did to cowl, to reverse book. I'm into like this two-tone. And it looks like double knit. And it's, well, it's not double knit. Um, basically what I did was I knit the outer layer first. And then I go back and I pick up stitches on the edge same amount of, and then I knit the inside cover to cover up the floats. That's so cool. And I love when you have it on, you can see the blue pop. Yeah, and it's, and it's such a beautiful blue. It's like, you know, like, so like, and if I don't want to wear this, I could just flip it around and just. Yeah, and then it looks like a little border. Plus, yeah. I love the color pooling that happened with that. Right, it's so beautiful. So the yarn is by From Me To You Yarns. Um, She's awesome and she, she, she specifically dyed this yarn for the collaboration for, um, oh, I gotta show you something because you will appreciate this, hold on. So I also did another collaboration with Lady Dye Yarns um, where she has different clubs, right? So each month, it could be a theme from a musical. So this particular month, which was last month was from Rent, the musical. And so I designed a hat that says 525,600 on it. 525,600 minutes. Isn't that cool? So I, so she was like, Lewis, I want you to design something for the rent. I'm like, what am I going to do for rent? I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, and the first thing that popped up when I think of rent is that song, 525,600. So I, I wanted to test it out and I'll try to be quick about this, but I called a couple of friends who were not knitters and I told them, I said, I'm gonna say something to you and I want you to say the first thing that pops out of your mouth. I'm like 500, and I didn't even sing it. I just said 525,600. They're like, minutes, and they start singing. So Seasons <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It was great, it was great doing this project. I loved it and the knit, they loved it. And so I did the knit version and then Cairo did the crochet version, which looks identical to this one. So it's great. So it's great. So when people see 525,600, they're like, oh, that's rent. I'm like, got it. <laughs> and also a reminder, again, just to bring it full circle of the year we've had and how we want to live. You know, the, the person who wrote rent, I think he died opening night. Yes, you're right. And what, what a, you know, what a thing, what a legacy he left. So it is such a good message. Everything we've talked about tonight of how knitting has been so powerful in our lives and how we're choosing to live even more fiercely now that we've made it through. I agree. I agree. I agree. You're right. Thank you, Lewis Brooklyn Boynets. You're always such a breath of fresh air. I miss you. I know it's been great. Thank you so much. And I look forward for us hanging out VKL 2022. Manifest. Bye. <laughs> Take care.